north of Copenhagen. But I can see Sweden from here. And here I am in my quarantine home office. Also, in here, Sweden is never far away from my mind. Behind me is a painting uh, from this book on the beautiful Swedish island of Gotland. Um, it's painted by a Danish artist uh, called ne Hans Nikolai Hansen in 1894. So, in a way, Swedish and Danish cultural heritage is um, merged together here in this painting. I thought that would be a fitting backdrop for my talk. I'm very sorry that we're not together for the DigiCult event due to the COVID-19 pandemic that's costing so many lives and that has brought society as we know it to a standstill. All attention these days goes to news updates on the health situation and the consequences for global economy. And at the beginning of this lockdown, when artists and cultural institutions started saying this crisis is going to deeply affect our cultural life, the Danish Minister of Culture said, and I quote, I would see it as inappropriate to be talking about culture right now, implying when there is a health and economic crisis. Right now, our TV, radio, media and official platforms are filled with a relatively small and homogeneous group of voices dominated by economics, science and national security. Culture in the broadest sense is not fully at the table, nor is the potential of those special experiences and perspectives embedded in cultural heritage. It's not being heard. For years, politicians and citizens have been asking what cultural institutions do for society, what their relevance is. This question has gained new urgency now that we are all closed down. So how will we respond? What can we contribute to society now and in the months ahead? How will we collaborate, lead and follow? How do we want to be remembered? What we as cultural institutions do and don't do in response to the COVID-19 crisis will affect how the public and our governments perceive of our long-term relevance in society. COVID-19 is a crisis that will alter the way we see and think about the world. In order to be relevant for everyone in society, GLAMS must play a role in shaping this changed worldview. But take a look around right now, everywhere, GLAMS, which is of course short for galleries, libraries, archives and museums, they're all responding with creativity and energy, organizing community singing from home in front of the TV, posting historical information and facilitating dialogue around the topic of pandemics, sharing highlights from closed exhibitions and galleries, inspiring people to do crafts and arts at home. They're sending out open calls for users to share their stories of COVID-19 so that it can be preserved and become part of our common history and much, much more. GLAMs are finding new ways to stay present in people's lives and connected with their communities. And it's aided by digital technologies. Taking care of each other by keeping a distance seems almost tailor-made for digital bridge building. All over the world, people are hungry as ever for art and culture. We're stuck at home. All the theaters and cinemas and museums and libraries are closed. But digital culture has never been more popular. People are using their imagination to play and create and participate in culture. For many people, 
Digital platforms are their only way of connecting with family and friends right now and of getting entertainment, enjoying the sensuality and reflectiveness of art. We're seeing digital in a whole new light these days. So culture is important to people, also when our health and economy is at risk. We can see that. People are obviously missing art and culture. When culture is suddenly absent, that's when we realize how much we miss it and how much we need it, how much of a difference it makes in our lives. But the big question is, how can we begin to understand and evaluate the impact that we can make in people's lives in this exceptional situation, both during the shutdown and once society starts to open up again to a changed reality? What can we do to make our politicians think of culture as something that it's very appropriate to talk about right now? Because culture counts in people's lives. Europeana, the platform and network for Europe's cultural heritage, helps us face shared challenges with shared solutions, instead of all of us trying to invent the wheel at the same time. Europeana has put a lot of work into developing a tool set for GLAMS to better understand and increase the impact we're having in society, the difference we make in people's lives. There's a whole impact playbook for getting to grips with these questions. Now, assessing the impact your institution may have in society, that can seem a pretty daunting task. But the impact playbook is easy to use. It's conceived like a cookbook with recipes you can be inspired by to cook up your own flavor of impact assessment. However, the key question is the same for all of us. Let me read a bit from the introduction to the playbook. In the cultural heritage sector, we work for a great cause, for the good of society as a whole. And we have ambitious goals, but it's not always easy to see whether we're achieving them. By developing a shared language about impact, we believe that we can not only show our value, but speed up innovation and increase our relevance to society." End of quote. And we need that more than ever right now. Let me read a bit further. The world in which we operate is changing fast, blurring the boundaries between producers and consumers and challenging the value of culture and its impact. Adapting to this new environment of active cultural participation is key to the success of our sector in the years to come. And impact assessments can play a crucial role in this process. We can make our content work a lot harder and do a lot more good if we understand how our activities relate to what people want, need and feel. End of quote. It's almost prophetic of the situation we find ourselves in right now. A timely book for our sector. So what is impact? The playbook defines it as the following. Changes that occur for stakeholders or in society as a result of activities for which the organization, for instance, your museum, is accountable. The playbook consists of a range of handy tools. And uh, I'd like to just quickly introduce three of those. Uh, the strategic perspectives, they define the point of view of the impact you want to assess. For instance, social or operational, by that we mean the practical frameworks for what we do in our glamps. The second one uh, is value lenses. They allow you to focus on a particular value that your users may get out of the experience that you're providing. For instance, learning, a sense of community or legacy. 
And by that we mean the fact that we preserve our heritage for future generations is valuable in itself to society and its value to people even though they may, may never set foot in um, a museum or a library or an archive. And finally, the third tool I'd like to highlight today is the change pathway. That helps you to understand the relationship between the investments uh, internally that you're making and the external effects that you contribute to in society. It's really great for evaluating impact of initiatives you're already running and here you read it from left to right. But it's also a powerful tool for planning or pursuing an impact you want to have in society. And here you read it from right to left, starting with the impact you want to contribute to. During this lockdown, at my own museum, SMK, we're saying that the museum is closed, but the collection is open. We put years of work into making our collection as open and useful as possible to people all over the world with open licensing. But our impact in society will not just be about increasing our presence on digital channels. It's about being relevant in people's everyday lives as they unfold in this new and unknown territory where we can hardly recognize our world again. We want to be a place, a platform that help people understand and cope with the current crisis and its consequences. So that during and after the lockdown, people will feel like glams are pillars in our society that we can turn to where we can find a sense of community, even though we're living in isolation. Glams everywhere are bubbling with an incredible energy and imagination during the quarantine. We're seeing wonderful initiatives popping up at lightning speed in response to the shutdown and the fact that we can't open our doors to welcome in audiences. But at least that what we're experiencing at SMK, but I'm guessing it might be the same case in other GLAMs. Our response so far has been reactive and somewhat unorganized, with no unifying idea or direction. We're frantically trying to do something relevant without being completely clear if it's the right thing for the right people. Nina Simon recently blogged about this dilemma and uh, I'll quote a couple of her well-written thoughts here. In some cases, rapid response is phenomenal and highly relevant. I'm thrilled that art museums are donating personal protective equipment to healthcare workers. I'm amazed by historic sites that are offering their facilities up for hospital beds and food distribution centers. I'm grateful Arts councils are setting up emergency funds for artists. I'm glad nature centers and parks are staying open as places of connection and healing. These forms of rapid response are timely and meaningful, but I had to hunt for the above examples. Meanwhile, without my asking, my inbox is overflowing with a deluge of virtual museum tours, live-streamed opera performances, digital educational resources. And it makes me wonder, is this the most meaningful way cultural organizations can contribute? Or is it just the fastest way? I'm not opposed to these offerings. I can see the hope and pleasure small snippets of art, music, history and nature provide. But why are we doing it? Are we doing it based on some kind of expressed community need? Are we doing it with an eye towards serving communities that are struggling most? Or are we doing it to assure ourselves that we are doing something? To assure our donors we still exist and that our jobs are worth keeping, which is in itself important. 
You could argue that these organizations are contributing what they do best. But we're a creative sector, and I think we could get more creative. In the race to deliver, I worry we may distract ourselves from the potential to envision and deliver true community value." End of quote. Nina Simon's blog post helped me realize something important. Now that the adrenaline of the early response to the crisis has worn off, and we need to ready ourselves for the long road ahead, it's important to transition from a more ad hoc response to one that's still nimble, but more sustainable, strategic, and well understood and supported by staff, stakeholders, and members of society alike. Impact Playbook to the Rescue. This is a great tool to help us prioritize our resources and efforts where they're most likely to have impact. So, Following Nina Simon's suggestion, let's try and focus on the communities that need us most to be of service right now. At SMK, some of the ideas we're investigating are, well, right now, schools and kindergartens in Denmark are starting to reopen, but due to the required safety distances, they don't have enough space for all the children. So only half of all kids in the capital region can go back to school and kindergarten. It's a long and dreary waiting time to be locked up at home for the kids. Could museums invite kindergartens and school classes to use the empty galleries to provide the necessary space for teaching and togetherness to begin again for these children? So let's see how that would look in playbook terms. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to just focus on the case of the school kids here. So. For school classes in need of space to gather in and learn together, the strategic perspective might be social or operational. And the value lenses to look through could be learning, obviously, but also existence. So the fact that we have museums, the buildings, uh, the facilities in our, in our society, that provides a whole new opportunity to use them as learning spaces right now, in a new sense of the word. And for the change pathway, here we have a concrete idea for an activity. So let's see what impact we can aim to contribute to. And here, the stakeholders, that's the school kids, their teachers, also the parents who are eager to have their kids back in school. Um, the resources, that's the empty galleries. Um, the activity that the museum would be providing is space for learning. When we look at the outputs, uh, that would be that more kids can start in school earlier. If we look at the outcomes, we can look at both short and long term. Um, on the short term, well, obviously less pressure on families with kids because a more normal everyday routine can start to open up. Um, on the longer term, I guess would be better learning experiences for the kids. It's not so easy to have great learning when you're locked up at home. And the impact, well, that would be helping to get our kids back in school in a safe way. So that would be a pretty good argument for museums playing an active role in society during the pandemic. Okay, let's look at another case. Are vulnerable citizens, for instance, the elderly, are likely to be affected by this lockdown for the longest time? How can GLAMS arrange social activities that are meaningful to them, during this quarantine and that will ease their loneliness and isolation. This is a big societal problem right now. So when it comes to building activities with vulnerable citizens, we could use the social strategic perspective, 
and we could look through the community and legacy value lenses as this could become a lifeline and sense-making initiative for them. Now for the change pathway. So here we have a much vaguer idea of a problem we'd like to have a positive impact on to ease the feeling of isolation and loneliness for people in long-term quarantine. So now we can go backwards in the change pathway. The impact we're trying to contribute to would be easing the loneliness and isolation of some of the people in society who are most severely affected by the COVID-19 lockdown. The outcomes we could contribute to would be for these users to feel happier, more connected, less isolated. The outputs of our initiative here would be participatory activities, something like meetups or co-creation that's facilitated online so that people can stay safe at home while having something meaningful to go to with each other. The activities to set this into place would be for us to reach out to uh, the stakeholders and plan meaningful activities with them. The resources we need uh, to contribute to this impact would be, well, the relevant staff, uh, competencies uh, and some adequate platforms. And uh, finally, of course, our stakeholders, that's um, vulnerable, maybe elderly citizens locked up in quarantine. So as you can see, in this change pathway, we started with the impact we want to contribute to and worked our way backwards. And that helps us to understand what kinds of resources and activities we need to invest if we want to have a particular impact in society. So these are just some quick examples to demonstrate how you can work with the impact tools and try and see how you can develop this impact that you'd like to contribute to in society. It's not meant as a case study as such. It's more like a call to all of you GLAMs out there to use this special occasion to become more aware of your own potentials to make a positive difference in the communities you're part of. Now, we can't do everything at once for everyone, but the impact tools can help us crystallize what opportunities we have to make a difference and to prioritize our efforts. At this historical moment, it's key that we show our politicians and our fellow citizens that GLAMs do play a vital role in society. Let's make sure they know that culture is not only appropriate, but indispensable, also in times of crisis. <laughs>